your belief is that Bitcoin will replace fiat currencies in our lifetime? Yeah, yeah. I, I, at some point, you're not going to want a government-controlled currency because it does what this happens. It, you get a boom, and then you get a bust, and then the Fed has to adjust. Um, you get, and the boom and bust is all de determined by some political candidate who happened to win. Mm -hmm. And then they just say, okay, we're going to spend a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. And then you get a boom, and then all of a sudden you, you get a huge bust because the Fed has to say, wait, we're, we're going into inflationary times. We got to raise interest rates. And so all of a sudden you've got a bust. Mm -hmm. There's some, something healthy about a boom and a bust, but I think you will get, you'll get that anyway. Uh, people will, you know, be excited about something and then less excited and then excited again. I'll give you a kind of interesting example. Almost every technology goes through what I call the, the IS curve. I even branded it the Draper IS curve. It, every industry kind of comes up um, and, and then gets hyped to the max. And then that's sort of the dot on the I, it's a cursive I. Mm -hmm. And then it comes, drops down and they say, oh, God, well, this, you know, I can't buy anything with my mm -hmm. credit card and I can't do it. all these things that the internet has promised. I can't do anything with it. And so for years it sits there languishing, but while it's languishing, all these great engineers are working really hard and they're coming up with a great way for us to experience this internet thing. And then it starts slowly creeping up like an S and then it uh, explodes for years. And then it flattens out as new technologies come along and go through their same IS curve. Mm -hmm. So, so I like think a, almost like a same, false start in the beginning. Like, yeah. it, like there's hype because people see what it could be, but the work hasn't been done yet. So you got to do the work and then it takes off. That's exactly right. So I think the same things happen with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. you've, uh, you've, you've had the, the big hype I. And by the way, the S is much higher than the I. I mean, you think about, you know, the top of the I had Amazon valued at maybe, I don't know, $100 million. Mm -hmm. And now it's worth a couple trillion. Sure. Yeah, yeah, two trillion, something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a thousand times higher than the I was the S. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people don't even realize how creative other people are. And they don't realize how big something like this can become. Mm -hmm. So the internet transformed communications, information, gaming, entertainment, media, taxis, hotels. And those are all pretty big industries. They're big. They, they have a big influence and all that. But um, Bitcoin has the potential. Bitcoin with the blockchain, the smart contracts, the... the uh, uh, eventually DAOs, uh, have the potential to transform the biggest industries in the world. Mm. Uh, that's all of commerce, finance. Uh, it doesn't just stop with currency. It's, uh, you're going to see major changes in real estate as companies like Proppy all of a sudden um, uh, are the place you go for your title. So you probably wouldn't need title insurance anymore. Mm -hmm. um, insurance is going to go through major changes. Mm -hmm. And what is government but a lot of insurance policies. And so um, I think government's going to go through major transformation. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'd say 80% of government is probably insurance. It's your health care insurance, your workman's comp, your uh, welfare, your unemployment, unemployment insurance, the Pension, Social Security, Social pension, Security, yeah. all that stuff. Um, that probably does make up about 80%. And so all of that with the Bitcoin economy could be virtual. Mm. And various governments could compete for your service mm. to provide better service for you. Uh, and so I've seen a few governments that are being built up in space or 11 miles offshore or mm. in free trade zones or whatever. And uh, in fact, I'm, a, I'm a, a citizen of one of them. Which one? Um, oh, God, I wish I remembered. Um, he's going to be mad. The guy who created Aragon 
has also now okay. created a new government, Luis mm-hmm. um, uh, Cuende. He uh, and and anyway, he made me the 187th. Uh, member of the of the government. You were one of the first uh, e residents of uh, I think. Uh, yeah, Estonia? I was supposed to be number one. Okay, but I ended up being number three because uh, they some New York Times editor got a chance to be first. Be first in exchange for a story. Yeah, and then Jervitson <laughs> was second because I felt like okay, Steve, you were in a your grandfather was the Estonian president. I'll give you number two. Uh, okay. And then I was number three. Okay. And, um, and I really loved that. By the way, that government is so far ahead of our government in, in digitizing the government. Mm. What are they doing? Uh, digitized voting, digitize the whole economy is digitized. Your parking is digitized. Your taxes are digitized. Everything is, everything is online mm. and it's very efficient. And that has allowed that um, government to uh, swing above its uh, weight class. Mm-hmm. It uh, it looks like it's. Uh, I think they're maybe number three as a per capita unicorn creator. Wow! And a lot of that is based on a, a government that in, encourages, sets its people free, and trusts th- trusts them and sets them free. Yeah. When we switch from, let's call it a fiat-based <clears throat> world to a Bitcoin-based world, however that happens um, or whenever that happens, is it a peaceful transfer or do you worry that there's <clears throat> like conflict and and as we've seen over the centuries and, and even thousands of years, whenever global reserve currencies change hands and things like that, it usually hasn't been very peaceful. How do, how do you kind of think through that? And um, obviously there's an investment case for an asset, but then there's also like, you have a family, you're a human, right? Like, like there's things that like, you don't want to see suffering in the world, bad right. things. So h- how do you think this plays out? It is playing out. And I, th- I, I would argue that we were all pretty much at peace while the internet was booming because that was all about communications and being better, um, you know, doing business with each other mm-hmm. and building a supply chain throughout the world. And everybody was benefiting from that. And that was unprecedented at how, um, how much more productive people were during that time and how many people got brought out of poverty during that time. And then Bitcoin came along mm-hmm. and the great countries, the great leaders are the ones who have embraced Bitcoin. The weak leaders are the ones who are saying, no, we've got to control things. And all of a sudden, they use that as an excuse or whatever to show their true colors, which is, I need to control everybody. When you have a control-based government, they go to war because it's a single person. It's a weak person. It's somebody who gets everybody to do exactly what they want them to do. And those people also want the rest of the world to do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. And they um, and so they'll attack if they're not doing what they want to do. So I'd argue it's already happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there were more wars happening. And then when all the wars are done, um, hopefully we'll all, sur- most of us will survive or, you know, mm-hmm. vast majority will survive. Um, that'll be the time when we all kind of hold hands, the borders start to drop, the businesses start doing doing work across borders again. Uh, the supply chain reopens up around the world. We don't have to say us against them. Mm-hmm. And we're all better off. Mm-hmm. It, it feels like um, most people, I think in the Bitcoin uh, community, think that is the end state. And there's questions in terms of how we get there. Um, But also there's questions about the U.S. government and uh, are they going to fully embrace it? Are they going to tax it? Are they going to um, maybe in the most extreme case ban ownership or or whatever? It also feels like maybe we've kind of de-risked some of the most extreme reactions, right? We have politicians who hold the asset. Uh, We have many businesses that are publicly traded that that, uh, use the asset. Many Wall Street firms now are playing in it. What do you think is kind of the play, if you will, for the U.S. government? Is it something where they just say, hey, it's a fast-growing sector, we're going to put some taxes here, and, and that'll be good enough? Or do you think that there's other regulations that you worry about or, or people should be paying attention to? Now, again, I, I say that we um, 
the, the good leaders are pushing, they're trusting people and setting them free. And the bad leaders are trying to control things and regulate and mm-hmm. tax and whatever else. Now, I understand taxing because it, it, it aligns interests. Mm-hmm. And I think that the U.S. government should understand that they've just wasted a ton of money on 80,000 IRS agents, where if they became a Bitcoin economy, everybody would be paying their taxes automatically. 